A nation ruled by Islamic law, the legal age for marriage is nine years old, which is the age of one of Muhammad's brides. In Iran, a devout Muslim beheaded his seven-year-old daughter because he suspected she had been raped by her uncle. A general practice of Muslims is to cut out the genitals of little girls without anesthesia. This, they believe, will make them pure. Over 90% of Pakistani wives have been struck, beaten, or abused sexually for reasons like cooking an unsatisfactory meal or failing to give birth to a male child. In Islam, a man can divorce his wife by saying, I divorce you, three times. Then she's a single woman, without support and without her children, who are usually taken by the father. Aisha, the most beloved of the many wives of the Prophet Muhammad, admonished women to submit in no uncertain terms. She said, O oh, women folk, if you knew the rights that your husbands have over you, every one of you would wipe the dust from your husband's feet with your face. The global war we're fighting against Islamic Jihad is not about bombs and hijacked airplanes. It's also about the oppression of women. The Islamic law, Sharia, that terrorists are fighting to impose upon the world is a law that would create a global state of gender apartheid. The oppression of women promoted by Islam manifests itself in innumerable ways. In Islamic countries like Somalia, female circumcision is the rule. Virtually every girl has her clitoris excised, sometimes as young as five years old. The Quran says, as for those women whose ill will you have reason to fear, admonish them, then leave them alone in bed, then beat them. Shiite Islam allows men to have temporary marriages so that they can have sex outside their permanent marriages without sinning. In Colorado, a Saudi immigrant named Humaydan al-Turki was sentenced to 27 years to life for keeping a woman as a slave and sexually abusing her in his home. Al-Turki claimed that he was a victim of anti-Muslim bias. He told the judge, Your Honor, I'm not here to apologize for things I did not do and for crimes I did not commit. The state has criminalized these basic Muslim behaviors. Sexual slavery is possible primarily because slavery itself still exists in the Muslim world and is sanctioned by Islamic teaching. In Algeria, unveiled educated independent women who will not wear the veil are seen as military targets and increasingly shot on sight. One Algerian woman who veiled herself said, fear is stronger than our will to be free. In the Muslim holy city of Mecca in March 2002, 15 teenage girls perished in a fire at their school when the Saudi religious police refused to let them out of the burning building because they were not veiled. As many as 75% of women in Pakistani prisons are behind bars for the crime of having been raped. Honor killing. The murder of one's daughter or sister for shaming the family by being raped is encouraged by the culture Islam has created. Rape is regarded as a stain on the family honor which can only be removed by the death of the victim. According to the Chicago Tribune, on May 31, 1994, Kifaya Hossein, a 16-year-old Jordanian girl, was lashed to a chair by her 32-year-old brother. He gave her a drink of water and told her to recite an Islamic prayer. Then he slashed her throat. Immediately afterwards, 
He ran into the street, waving the bloody knife and crying, I have killed my sister to cleanse my honor. Kifaya's crime, she was raped by her other brother, her judge and jury, her own uncles, who convinced her eldest brother that Kifaya was too much of a disgrace to the family honor to be allowed to live. Like other violent practices directed at women, honor killings have also migrated to the West. For example, on January 8, 1999, in Cleveland, Ohio, a Palestinian woman, Mithel Dayim, was murdered by two male cousins in what prosecutors termed an honor killing. Her crime, she had refused to marry a first cousin, insisted on attending college, drove her own car, and was deemed too independent. Women in Islamic societies suffer on a daily basis from indignities, violations of their human rights, and acts of violence that in some cases lead to death. <laughs> Oppression of women is not an incidental feature of the societies that foster terrorism. It is a linchpin of the system of social control that jihadists are fighting to impose worldwide. But as for women, maybe you think that being a woman is a crime. It's not a crime to be a woman. Women are the best creatures created by God. They represent the kindness, the beauty that God instills in them. Women are respected in Iran. In Iran, every family who is given a girl, they're ten times happier than having a son. Women are respected more than men are. They are exempt from many responsibilities, many of the legal responsibilities responsibilities rest on the shoulders of men in our society because of the respect culturally given to women, to the future mothers. In Iranian culture, men and sons and girls constantly kiss the hands of their mothers as a sign of respect, a respect for women. Feminists and everyone else concerned with human freedom must support Muslim dissidents, both male and female, who are risking their lives in a battle for women's rights under Islam.